Hey everyone, welcome back. In the next few videos, we're going to be creating enemy ships. And these I think will be quite important and exciting videos because we're going to be going over a lot of planning and conceptual setup before we dive into the code. And hopefully by the end of it, I can show you how important this can be to ensure that we develop in a way that reduces the amount of work overall so that we can reuse code and make a system flexible enough to handle additions and changes in the future. So say if you wanted to add more enemy types or different types of bullets in the future, the system will allow you to do it. So in this first video, we're going to be going over the conceptual planning and setup, and then we'll move on to coding in the later videos. So let's have a think about what we've already programmed into the game. At the moment, we have a player ship, asteroids, and bullets. The player ship can create bullets, which travel at a fixed speed and direction, and those bullets can collide with asteroids and destroy them, and also themselves. The ship can also collide with the asteroids, which will destroy the ship. So that's how all of our different objects are interacting with each other and colliding. So now we're planning on introducing three enemy ships, and I've called these Raiders, Hunters, and Brutes. Now, in essence, these are all going to kind of act in similar ways, although they'll have slightly different variables and behavior. But essentially, we want all enemy ships to be hurt by the player's bullets. We want all the enemies to create bullets, which can hurt the player. And we don't really want enemies to be able to destroy each other. Or maybe you do, but in this game, we're going to make it so that ships that are part of the same faction aren't going to hurt each other. So let's have a look first at the different enemies' properties. The raider ships are going to be the kind of grunts of my enemy faction. So they're going to be moving in a random direction when they're first created until the player gets close enough to them. When the player gets close, they're going to turn to face the player and shoot at them, although they'll continue to move in their set direction. Fairly simple behavior for those. Now, the hunters are slightly different. Like the raiders, they're going to move in a random direction when they're first created, and when the player gets close enough to them, they are going to turn and kind of duck and weave and chase the player until the player leaves their detection radius. They are also going to periodically shoot bullets at the player, and those bullets will be a little bit faster than the raiders' bullets. So they're a little bit more dangerous. And finally, the brutes, again, they will move in a random direction, although I'm going to make them move at a slower speed than the others. When the player gets close enough to the brutes, the brutes are going to, again, turn to the player and give chase. And they're going to pick up speed as they chase the player. So they're going to move closer and closer. They're not actually going to shoot, their goal is to kind of collide with the player and destroy their ship that way. And I'm going to make the brutes a bit tougher than the raiders and the hunters. I'm going to give them five HP because they are kind of surrounded by shield and it's a bit tougher to kill them. So you can see there's a lot of similar properties to the ships, but they do have their differences. So they're all going to have a kind of direction and speed that they move at when they're first created. They all have a kind of detection radius. And finally, where they're kind of most similar is how they interact with the other objects. So like I said, if they create bullets, those are going to harm the player. They're not going to harm each other. They can take damage from the player's bullets and they can also damage the player by running into them and destroying their ship. Now, if there's three different enemy objects, that's a lot more new collisions that we have to add, for example, to the player's bullet. And if we do it that way, it also means that we're going to be repeating a lot of code. But really, all of the collisions are going to kind of result in the same thing. All of the enemy ships are going to lose health or be destroyed when a bullet hits them. So, instead of putting in three different collision events, it would be a lot easier if we could just have one. And the way that we can do this is have a parent object for the enemies, a parent ship object, that all of the enemies inherit from. So in GameMaker, we can have parent objects that can set certain properties like variables. They can even have code and behavior, but it means that all of their children objects can be referred to as a member of their parent, kind of. If I check for a collision with the parent ship, that's going to check for a collision with all of the enemy types. So that way, I only need one event. It'll also allow us to have a place to set up the shared properties of the ships. 
So now that's kind of reduced the number of interactions that we need to put in. So we have now a ship that can create a bullet. That bullet can either hit an asteroid or hit the enemy. If it hits the enemy, it's going to take away one of the enemy's health and perhaps destroy it. If it hits an ally, then I don't want it to damage the ship. Similarly, the enemy can create an enemy bullet, basically, that does the same thing, but in reverse. So perhaps they can also hit asteroids, they can hit the player and damage the player, but I don't want it to damage the enemy ships. But even now we can see that these two bullet objects are kind of doing the same thing. They're just acting differently depending on who created them and who they're hitting. So maybe we don't really need two different objects for the bullets. Maybe we can do this all in one. And instead we can set up a faction system where all the objects belong to a certain faction. So the ship and perhaps if we create allies for the ship, can belong to an ally faction, and when they create a bullet, we can set the bullet's alignment to the allies. On the flip side, we can make the parent of the enemy ship belong to the enemy faction. And perhaps later on we could even have debris or floating objects or floating guns or even structures that can belong to different factions. And exactly like how we did for the enemy ship, we can accomplish this by having a parent ally object which all of our allied objects can be a child of, and all of the enemy objects can be a child of the enemy faction object. And this should be a really flexible system because we could even potentially introduce more factions in the future. We could have, for example, a neutral faction, and you could build some really interesting missions around perhaps a group of ships or a group of aliens that are kind of friendly or at least won't attack either faction until that faction attacks them. All right, so we've gone over all of the conceptual planning for the enemy ships and factions. In the next tutorial, we'll jump into the code. So I'll see you then.